everyone and welcome to episode 66 of Off The Sprue. This is another video in the basic uh, skill series and in this one I'll be showing you how to use photo edge parts. Yes, brass photo edge. You either love this or you hate it. Um, I'm a big fan of photo edge myself and uh, in this video I'll be showing you the very basics of uh, using these metal parts. Nowadays, more and more kits uh, include photo edge parts uh, as, as, as standard. Usually these were, were always sold separately. So knowing how to use these metal parts is becoming essential. So why bother with photo edge? This is a standard styrene kit part. And here we have the uh, equivalent photo edge part. And you can see the difference in detail. Guys, now photo edge parts, metal parts come in all shapes and sizes and uh, I own a lot of these. Uh, I love my aftermarket. The most, uh, the most common uh, variety is brass, unpainted. You can see here, this is from Edward. These all detail parts. They also uh, come in very useful stuff like these uh, 50 caliber ammunition belts. Some of these are made from aluminium such as this uh, cargo net and these HESCO barriers, different type of metal. They're useful in a diorama building. These are some banana leaves and uh, also very useful uh, because they can be bent, shaped. This is some razor wire, also metal, very useful indeed. And then finally, we also have the painted variety, the pre-painted variety, and this is some uh, cockpit detail parts. The photo edge kit that I'll be using for the Jackal is from Tetra Model Works. This is a very extensive kit that contains uh, some vinyl parts as well as photo edge parts. And really guys, this is a gorgeous kit and uh, highly recommend it if you are building the Jackal. You can see this uh, adds uh, metal detail parts to almost every corner of, uh, of this nice model from, from Hobby Boss. And uh, if you can, try and get this uh, this detail kit uh, for your Jackal model. So why a video on using photo edge parts? If you're an experienced modeler, this video is not for you. This is for novice modelers. And uh, when I started off in the hobby, there was no one around to show me this stuff. I had to learn this by myself. Hopefully uh, this will uh, guide you along if you are new to the hobby. Let's talk about tools. Uh, to uh, use photo edge parts, you'll first need a hobby knife. And for this, I usually fit a brand new sharp blade to my hobby knife just to make sure that I have a good cutting surface. These photo etched scissors from Tamiya are very handy, also highly recommended to do this type of work. You also need a set of tweezers. You'll be working with very small parts and a set of tweezers is essential. Next up is this uh, very helpful pair of pliers from Tamiya, also made for photo edge parts. And uh, for most of my photo edge work, I use this uh, photo edge bender. This one is from Master Tools and uh, it comes with um, these little uh, plastic inserts that you use to, to, uh, to bend your parts. This is essential. If you work with uh, really small parts, then a uh, set of pliers like these are also very helpful. A word about adhesives, your ordinary styrene uh, cement will not work for this. Rather look at uh, Ultra Glue from Ammo Mech, this is made for photo edge parts, as well as gel type super glue, this one being from Green Stuff World. Guys, because we will be working with uh, lots of small loose parts, I always use these trays. You've seen me done this before on, on uh, on other builds and this will really just help me to keep things organized and uh, prevent me from losing very small parts. When you're done with your photo edge parts, don't throw the, uh, the frets away. This is very useful metal and in the past I've often uh, repurposed these for scratch building. If you plan to uh, use photo edge parts, uh, an aftermarket detail kit, make sure that you coordinate between uh, the kit instructions and uh, the instruction leaflet for the, uh, for the detail parts, as uh, in many cases you'll have to replace parts indicated in the uh, kit instructions. Photo edge parts uh, come in frets and uh, these are connected by very thin pieces of metal to that little frame and uh, to remove them I use my hobby knife and just cut this away. 
Again, keep these in trays to uh, just prevent you from losing anything. To remove some of the uh, some of the small burrs from these metal parts, uh, the uh, the photo edge scissors from Tamiya is very handy. Of course, you can also sand uh, these parts. The main thing to make sure of is that you don't bend them by accident, and this is where the uh, the photo edge pliers from Tamiya come in very handy. So let's look at an example. Now these running boards fit on the side of the, the jackal. You can see there that is the, uh, the starting parts, the frame. And the uh, first thing to do is to remove this from the sprue. We'll be adding some photo edge metal parts to this next. These are the parts, they've been cleaned up. And uh, these are now ready to take the metal parts. Now you can see there's some starting parts uh, indicated in the instructions. However, we won't be fitting these. We're going to use these highly detailed metal ones provided by Tetra Model. These are the parts in question, six of them on this uh, brass uh, fret. And the uh, next step is to carefully remove these, carefully cut away those little uh, metal uh, pins that keep them uh, on the frame. These are carefully removed. They are placed in a tray so I don't lose them. And uh, guys, I always keep my uh, my photo etched in, uh, in a different tray just to make sure that I don't lose anything. Now you'll see these, uh, these lines and they, are, they indicate where bends can be made. Uh, so this has already been done for you. The next step is to use your photo etch bender as well as a set of pliers and you, this you'll need if you're working with very small parts. Now using a photo edge uh, bending tool is very easy. First line up those bending lines. You can see that's what I've done there. And uh, you can now make a, uh, a very precise bend in that uh, thin metal uh, by uh, simply bending that little part upwards along the line. You can see that's what I'm doing there, 90 degree angle. And uh, once this is done and we remove the little part and there you can see that metal has been shaped very precisely and we can move on to the, uh, to the second bend indicated in, uh, in the instructions. I perform the, uh, the same procedure again and uh, there you can see that little hinge or bracket very precisely bent and uh, this is now ready to go onto the uh, styrene parts. The fit uh, from these metal parts from Tetra model is absolutely perfect and you can see there they, uh, they fit beautifully onto the, the, the starring parts and uh, the first phase of uh, uh, preparing these, uh, these running boards has been completed. Now we just need to fit the, uh, the, uh, the grid metal on top of those, uh, top of those steps. These are also included in the kit, there they are. And uh, the next thing to do is to carefully remove that uh, similar to what I've shown you earlier. Use your hobby knife, carefully cut those parts away, making sure you don't bend them by accident. Now to glue these uh, in place onto the uh, onto the styrene parts, I'm going to use gel type super glue. And you can think of tack welding in metal work. First applying a small bead of weld just to uh, keep it in place. And uh, once this is done, you can follow up with your uh, uh, ultra glue from Ammo MIG. You can see there, I'm placing the metal part in position using my tweezers. The, uh, the super glue will form an instant bond, keeping the part in place, something like that. And once I have this in place, I can follow up with the ultra glue. Of course, this will uh, dry completely clear. And uh, this I'm going to apply with uh, the tip of uh, a toothpick. Very easy to do. And uh, in the end, we'll have a nice, uh, neat um, bond using the adhesives that I've shown you. Next, we need to uh, glue the uh, the running boards to the uh, to the hull of the jackal. And uh, again, the little metal parts fit perfectly. And here you can see uh, the running boards have been fitted. They even function a little bit. You can fold those up or down. Uh, depending on how you want to pose your model. And uh, really, this is the beauty of uh, a photo edge part. You can, you can really add all this beautiful detail uh, in this manner. Next, I'm going to show you these, these ammo boxes. They are quite nice, and uh, they require a few steps in order to assemble them. These are the parts on the, on the photo edge fret, 
And uh, we're going to follow the same procedure again using our hobby knife and uh, carefully remove these parts. That's everything we need for one ammo case. Now here you can clearly see these bending lines. They are on the inside of that, uh, of that piece. You can see this is the outside. So we will be bending uh, the metal inwards along those lines. This is inserted into my photo edge bender, making uh, dead sure that I'm on that little line there. Something like that. And uh, when I'm happy, I just uh, tighten that uh, screw there and I bend this upwards at a 90 degree angle. There we go. First bend is done. And I can move on to uh, the further ones. Again, inserting this into the bender, making sure that the line uh, is right on the edge there. Tighten the screw and uh, then carefully bend upwards. So that's it, our ammo box is slowly coming along. Using the thinner part of the bender, I'm now going to uh, uh, bend the side, something like that. There we go. And uh, then all that remains is the final bend. And uh, once this is done, we'll have our completed ammo box. Once you remove this, you might need to just uh, use your fingers or a set of pliers and just complete that 90 degree bend. Yeah, I'm using my uh, my pliers simply because it's, it's going to be very difficult to, to fit this into the photo edge bender. So that's why you need pliers as well. Now to glue this in position, I'm going to use some, uh, some masking tape just uh, to keep uh, the box together. This is wrapped around the box, something like that. And uh, when I'm happy that all the, all, the, all the sides are touching, I now use my gel type super glue and that thin uh, needle applicator and apply some super glue to the inside of the box. This is the lid and uh, I follow the same procedure here, looking at uh, those bending lines. Uh, these, this is a small part, so I might have to use my tweezers just to keep it in position. There we go, something like that. And uh, when I'm happy with the position, I can just bend this upwards, making a very precise bend into that uh, thin brass metal. And uh, there we go, that's the lid of the ammo case. This can now fit on, uh, on top of the open case. The fit is of course perfect. And there we go, very highly detailed little ammo box. This needs to be uh, added to the side. You can see there's a little hollow uh, for this. And uh, this is carefully positioned uh, with a set of tweezers. It's actually interesting how this is made. My understanding is that uh, this is a, a chemical process that is used uh, to produce these highly detailed parts. Very interesting indeed. This is the bottom section, that little ammo box, and here you can see, nearly completed. Now some parts won't fit into your photo edge bender, and uh, in this case you'll need to uh, carefully use your pliers, and uh, then very carefully bend this. Now guys, I do apologize for the, uh, the footage that's a bit out of focus here. This stuff is actually very difficult to film, uh, but hopefully you can still see what I'm doing there. There's the result. We have two uh, ammo boxes, beautifully detailed, and it's certainly a great improvement on the styrene kit parts. Now, once these are primed with your primer of choice, they can of course be painted just like regular styrene parts, and that's the beauty of Photo Edge. Photo Edge parts can, uh, can add some gorgeous detail to your models, and uh, mastering the, the use of these parts is, uh, is really an essential skill uh, to any modeler. Guys, that's it then for episode 66. Thank you for following along. As always, you can follow my builds uh, on Instagram. I'll also be posting regular updates there. Hoping to see everyone in the next video coming soon. Thank you for watching.